Hello heathens and welcome to my channel. I am Beauty Heathen and my channel is basically dedicated to the exploration of paganism through various mediums, whether in direct ritual work, through cosmetics, when I go into the educational content, and sometimes I do readings. Um, if you are returning to my channel, thank you so much for your continued support. If you are new, thank you so much for joining me, and please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, and set that bell to all to be notified of when I release new videos. You'll have to forgive me tonight. I'm a little bit <laughs> drained. It was a very, very, very difficult day. <laughs> This has been a day where not much has gone right. It's been very frustrating and aggravating. And yeah, things just have not gone my way today. So as a result, I'm starting recording rather late. But um, I wanted to be sure to do something because tonight is the full moon in Libra. It's also the pink moon. And one thing that I've been talking about in previous videos is doing release spells. Now typically a pink candle is not used for this purpose. However, I figure I can kind of sort of get away with it because it is the pink full moon. <laughs> and um, generally you would use white or black. I actually had an appointment with my reader last Friday um, and she had encouraged me to do this but with a black candle. Well, one of the things I didn't order in that order of candles was a black candle. So I have since ordered one but it's not going to be here until Thursday and I wanted to get this started sooner rather than later. And I figured today would be as good a time as any to not only do this for myself, but teach you guys how to do it for yourselves as well. And if you watch the ritual that I did for the community healing ritual. Oh, this is so heavy. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. There's much heavier than I remember it, either that or I'm extremely tired and everything seems to be about 20 to 50 pounds heavier than what they were originally. I don't know. But um, you'll recognize this herb blend if you tuned into the community healing ritual for healthcare workers. If you have not seen that one yet, I'm going to link it somewhere up there for you to watch. And I wanted to use some of this to kind of show how herb blends can be multi-purpose. Now, interestingly enough, I have not been to my local pagan store at all, but I found additional herbs that I had apparently bought a while ago in a bag <laughs> from my pagan store in this room not like five minutes before I started this video so I figured sure why not I'll go ahead and add some in because these are herbs that can still be used for the healing purposes as well as releasing things cleansing protection all that kind of stuff that especially these days is a very good thing to have so this blend is an herb of, uh, sorry, herbal blend of many, many different things, including a special ingredient. And to find all that information out, I do recommend watching the video that I am linking. Um, but I'm going to add to it a little bit of bear berry, which is sometimes used by Native Americans in smudging practice. Um, the smoke is said to carry the prayers of those who use it. Um, 
it's also a herb for courage and strength and I'll put the full information on the screen for any of the herbs that I'm adding to this because I'm just going based off of the top of my head and I know that's not fully encompassing not that I can put a lot of information on the screen I can't but I can at least expand on what they are um, I'm going to add in some lemongrass which has long been used in herbal medicine it can be good for soothing nerves and troubled spirits as well as treating colds and flu but it's also a good herb for cleansing which is something that we definitely want to do today <laughs> um, if you are new to magical workings the full moon the three days before, the day of, and the three days after the full moon are the time of each month that you want to work on releasing anything that no longer serves you. So that anything that you may have been carrying, whether it be anger, pain, um, frustration, anxiety, Anything that may be an underlying cause can be released into the universe to be transmuted back into positive energy. And this way you make room in two weeks when the full new moon, sorry, comes through. And that's when you do the workings to attract positive things. So the last herb that I'm going to add is chamomile. It's This is a really easy herb to grow. Um, I have grown it personally, Roman or German chamomile. It's generally useful for those seeking good luck, love, and prosperity. It's good at soothing the mind, body. It's useful in meditation. I will tell you from personal experience, if you grow chamomile and you use it, you let it dry, which having grown it, I can tell you that these fuzzy sections are actually seeds. And let me see if I can get that up closer. It's actually seeds. And you let this dry out and you can either cultivate the seeds to plant or you let it dry out and you can steep it in tea. And from personal experience, real chamomile tea from the dried herb tastes absolutely horrible. <laughs> Be sure to mix it with something with like lemon, honey, anything of that nature. But I will also tell you that if you are having trouble calming your nerves, if you are having trouble sleeping, if you are having difficulty at all just settling yourself, it is definitely an herbal remedy that will knock you out. Now, of course, that I'm not guaranteeing that for people with other issues or medications or, and definitely I would recommend consulting with a doctor before you try it because you never know if any herbs can um, cause issue with any of your medications. Generally, chamomile is pretty safe, but it's always best to double check. Um, and I... I'm not saying that for anybody with necessarily underlying issues, but from personal experience with, as somebody with a lot of anxiety issues, as somebody with a lot of um, stress in their life, I was quite pleasantly surprised at how quickly it knocked me out. So with that said, if you 
do decide to try it, I recommend taking it at night early enough so that falling asleep early isn't a problem and such that you can get a full night's sleep so that you're not groggy or anything in the morning. But I'm adding those three herbs to this blend. I'm just going to go ahead and crush them up a bit and then I'm going to use the mortar and pestle to blend them in a little bit further. Bearberry is being a little bit of a pita, but that's okay. We will get it ground in as much as we can. in mind if you want to do anything like this if you don't have the money to get herbs if you don't have the money to get big seven day candles if you don't have money to get the dragon's blood oil I'm going to use if you don't have money to you know spend really right now especially where so many people are suffering you don't have to do this you can do a very easy releasing spell with candles from the dollar store be they little tea lights or something bigger. You can take olive oil or any kind of oil you may have in the house, cooking oil. Dip a finger in some of it. Um, because you want to release, you want to do it in a counterclockwise motion. Um, and maybe put some salt, pepper, a little dash of cinnamon, maybe some anise, ground anise, or some maybe ground cardamom if you have it. It's not required. Keep in mind your magic is your own, and what predominantly matters with ritual work is your intention and what you ask for. So you don't need fancy materials, you don't need seven day candles, you don't need all this kind of stuff. These are things that I am personally using to give things a little bit of a boost and as a instructional aid to kind of show how to do things. But your magic is your own and especially during this time of difficulty going on right now where a lot of people are displaced and a lot of people are struggling financially because of loss of jobs and everything of that nature. I don't want you to think and I'm never going to sit here and say that unless you have this specific herb blend or unless you go out and get all of these um, herbs and things of that nature your magic is not going to work. You are never going to hear me say that because if anyone ever tells you that, they are outright lying to you and they are scamming you. Point blank period. Your magic is your own. You may be pulled to make certain offerings. You may be pulled to add certain herbs and spices into what you're doing. But if you don't have special things around the house, they're not required. Just do your best with what you got, okay? So, I blended it, that in a bit. It's not going to be perfect because things like lemongrass, um, even some of the herbs that you see that I had already blended in here, they don't grind down very well. I just heard something go clunk out. Ah! The only thing that I will say and I will advise you to do is when you are doing this kind of stuff, put some sort of covering over your table, be it paper, a paper towel, although I know that Paper goods can be a little bit 
difficult to come by right now. <coughs> this, this is just a recycled paper bag that the last time I went to my pagan store, they put my um, purchases in. That's all it is. <laughs> you can see it in um, my unbagging video, which I'll link somewhere up there. So it doesn't take anything special to protect your table. And what I'm going to do is you can either choose to carve or not carve the candle, especially if it's something that is in um, a container and you cannot pull the candle out. This step is not required. It just sometimes helps you focus what it is you are trying to do. So I'm actually going to write on the candle the word release. These are just cheap little wax carving tools that I got off Amazon. I think I got a set of five for like um, 10 bucks. Sometimes writing on candles is not very easy, so just do your best. Okay, so I've set my intention to be release, and now I'm going to do like bullet notes, <laughs> bullet points, release anger. Please forgive any background noise, my puppy's in the room with me gotten to the point where unless I bring her in here to um, sit with me while I record she's a very very upset little girl and um, where she already has the proclivity to destroy my things when I leave the house or um, when I'm not in the room even lately little PETA <laughs> I'm just taking added precautions and making sure she stays with me. So I want to release anger. I want to release money problems. And whenever you do these, you can always put in your own thoughts and ideas. These are just some. I'm going to release anger, money problems, stress, anxiety, And one thing that I always add to the candle is anything
scissors. And the reason why I put that down on top of the things that I listed is if the universe determines that there's anything that I'm holding on to, anything that I'm carrying that I should release that maybe I haven't thought of, this way I've kind of covered my bases. So, you don't have to carve the candle. If you have a candle that is in a container that you can't pull the candle out, you can very easily write these things on a piece of paper and stick it underneath the candle while the candle's burning down. Okay? So, it's nothing too difficult. As always, I am doing this, but do not do it unless you know that this is something that is safe for you to do. Remember, essential oils are generally always needing to be mixed with a carrier oil. And on top of that, if you don't mix them with some sort of carrier oil, they can frequently cause some sort of dermatological reaction. So, unless you are sure and have test patched or have worked with a certain essential oil frequently and have had no issues... Don't do this. I personally work with this oil all the time. I never have a problem. Keep in mind that can always change. One day you'll be fine. The next you may have some sort of reaction. So just bear that in mind. My oil of choice is Dragon's Blood Oil. And I put a healthy amount in my hand. The first thing I do is I rub it into my hands and I hold my hands together and I focus on what it is I'm looking to accomplish. Now my hands are dry. I've been washing them a lot. Even when I put on cream in between, my hands get very dry. So frequently when I do this, the first time I put oil on, it kind of sort of gets absorbed into my hand. So I always have to do a second little drip. And because I'm looking to release, I want to apply the oil in a downward motion. And in a counterclockwise motion. So... Am I turning it? Yeah. Turn it clockwise to apply it counterclockwise. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, it's that whole moment where it's like, wait a minute, am I doing this right? <laughs> okay. Of course, you're going to get little sh schnibbles of wax on your hands. It's okay. No one ever said being pagan or doing ritual work is going to be a neat and tidy process. <laughs> so, just do your best to get it off your hands as much as possible if you can. And now is the time I remember that my paper towels were absconded with. So... But I have Kleenex in here, so making do. So getting off any wax off my hands as much as I can. <laughs> now I'm going to take my finger, get a little bit more oil, and apply it to the top of the candle in a clockwise, sorry, counterclockwise rotation a few times. And 
Remember, this is just the anointing process. You can also take a little bit, put it on the base of the candle, do the same rotation a few times. That just kind of like reaffirms that you're releasing, you're putting it downward. So let me put the cap back on the oil. There we go. I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm feeling glitter is appropriate tonight. I think I will a little bit, but first, let me put the candle back somewhat. Let me take this is scoop. It does not take a lot of herbs or herb blend to. Cover the candle. Just try and make sure you have a little bit of everything in there if you can. And I'm going to actually use my carving tool. There's a little scooper at the end. I do a little black for protection. bit of blue. And keep in mind you're not going to be perfect and that's okay. You don't have to be. <coughs> I'm just going to mix in a little bit of each of my glitters. Not a lot, just a little bit. Give things a little bit of a boost. That's all I'm doing. doing that to just knock off any glitter that's on the tool that didn't come off right away. There's no real significance in that. Keep in mind, you don't have to buy glitters from a pagan store. You can get them fairly easily off Amazon. You can find them pretty inexpensively no matter what. I do recommend, if you can at all possible, try to go for biodegradable glitters. I want more ritual and less herpes of the cosmetic world. <laughs> I don't want to get it everywhere if I can avoid it. These are just the glitters that the Botanica that I ordered them from had. So I don't have all the colors. This is just what I could get my hands on. And then, just roll the candle in it. 
do your best to try to keep your hands out of it. Especially because you don't want glitter getting all over the place. Um, there's also little crystal shards that I have in here which you can learn about in the video from the doing a protection and healing ritual for our healthcare workers. But you know, this way you just get a little bit of everything. Try not to get it on the bottom because you don't want the candle to be uneven. Try to just carefully lower it in, like so. Move this monstrously heavy. Well, I'm gonna lose my grip on it. I am not strong enough for that tonight. And try to do your best to hold it. <laughs> This is always the somewhat tricky part. And then just trying to get whatever is left on the bag. Sorry if I'm blocking the camera at all. But there you go. Just try your best to get whatever's left onto the candle. That's just some extra glitter that hadn't knocked loose. That part especially I want to try to get on the can candle. Mainly because I don't want it flying everywhere when I put the bag to the side. And just like that, you have your ritual um, release candle. Ugh. I'm gonna have to move that tomorrow. <laughs> and oop, if you want it to act fast, do your best to not, not, K-N-O-T, <laughs> the wick. On these, it can be a little bit difficult because the wick is usually coated in wax. So it can be a little bit testy. But just do your best. Come on. See if I can use my tool to kind of feed it through. Let's see. I'm determined, dang it. <laughs> I will do this. I will get it. There we go. Yay! And there we go. There is a knotted wick. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I hope this has given some form of guidance as to how to make your own releasing candle. And go ahead and leave me a note down in the comments below if this has helped you at all. Or if you have any requests for any kind of demonstrations for um, prepping candles or any kind of specific workings you want to see. And I will do my absolute best to come through for you with that. <laughs> so with that, I hope you enjoyed this. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell before you go. And... I wish you all love, kindness, safety, protection, good health, 
joy, happiness, prosperity, and most of all, I wish you brightest blessings. And until next time, blessed be.